You call women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account only ruins you. I like Marco Rubio, but he simply does not have the experience to be president of the United States. Marco, the thing is this. When you're president of the United States, when you're a governor of a state, the, the memorized 30-second speech where you talk about how a great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. I'm a maniac, and everyone on this stage is stupid, fat, and ugly. And Ben, you're a terrible surgeon. Yes, so I was a senator. I understand we can disagree on the path forward. But those kinds of personal oh. assessments and charges are ones that I find... Well, uh, Senator, uh, one of us ran against Barack Obama. I was not that candidate. They're kicking me out the door. They're kicking me out the door. The darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because... Well, the primaries are in full swing. Voter turnout in this country is low, but this year it is sure to increase due to the tanned orange ball of racism we call Donald Trump, the old white female robot we call Hillary Clinton, and the low energy candidates competing against them. Let us not forget Hillary's email scandal. The socialist Bernie Sanders. and the Republican Zodiac Kelly. These are the things you're probably hearing from the media coverage of the primaries. Some of you might be lost on how primaries work in the United States. Well, most of the people understand that the United States runs on a two-party system, and primaries allow those two parties to pick a candidate that will win their party the nomination in the November general election. The news doesn't do its job of informing the public on how the race works, so today we will show you what the media won't. Let's talk about all the primaries. Before a party meets up and decides who is going to be their candidate in the, in the national convention in July, the national convention is where the political party members meet up and tally up all the delegate votes and the winners announced. Before that, candidates run for votes in each state. They battle against their opponent for the nomination. States have one of four primaries. In an open primary, Anyone from any political party affiliation may vote. In a closed primary, only those who registered with one of the political parties may vote. A semi-open primary is similar to open primaries in that anyone from any political party affiliation may vote, but can only vote in one primary for either the Republican or the Democratic primary. In a runoff primary, states hold a second primary between two candidates with the most votes. Of course, this all goes down the toilet if Trump wins, in which case anyone can vote as long as you're not Mexican or Muslim. Well, now we know how people can vote in a primary. So let's see what happens after people vote. After the votes are counted, the votes do not go directly to the candidate, but delegates who honor the people's votes and will vote for the candidate in the national convention. This is because we live in a democratic republic, meaning that we vote for representatives to make public policy. It's how the founding fathers wanted the Constitution to be. This is why when you vote in a primary, you may see other names besides the candidates in a ballot. Once you vote for a candidate, electors are delegated to vote for that candidate in the national convention. In the Republican Party, whichever candidate gets the most votes in the state receives all the delegates, whereas in the Democratic Party, the votes are proportional meaning the delegates are awarded to a candidate by the percentage of the vote won by a candidate. Here's an example of how the delegates work in the Democratic Party. If Keith has 50% of the vote in a state of 12 delegates and his opponent received 50% of the vote, then the delegates are split six for each candidate. In the Republican Party, if Keith received 51%, then he would receive all 12 delegates. Now the party established safety checks, much like the closed primary rule, in order for the opposite party to have little influence on the outcome of the winner of a primary contest. A party doesn't want a weak candidate to win, but the strongest to win the nomination. Superdelegates are those checks. A superdelegate isn't a delegate with superpowers, but rather one that is a member of Congress and is a member of the political party he or she serves. In the Republican Party, the superdelegates are awarded at the convention. In the, Dem in the Democratic Party, the superdelegates can vote for either candidate. 
The first primary is the New Hampshire primary. If a candidate wins big on those states following the primary, the news coverage influences voters in other states to pay attention to the winning candidate. With more name recognition and attention, the candidate might be able to win the next states just as big. This is called momentum. For example, candidate Trump and Clinton have both gained a lot of momentum and are getting a lot of press for it. The candidates campaign state to state until all the delegates for each party are won. After the national convention meets up in the summer, this year, 2016, they will be meeting in July, the event is televised, and the race continues to the general election, with a clear Republican and Democratic candidate facing off. Well, I hope that helps you understand primaries a bit better. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.